Hi everybody, I'm Dave Kaufman. You know, one of the cool things about visiting here in Southwest Florida is all the incredible reptile farms. And there was a few that I absolutely had to check out. And one of those is Ty Park's collection. He works with some of the most incredible lizard species anywhere around here. So let's go check it out here on Zilla Presents Herpers TV. I'm a herper, herper, herper. I'm a herper, I'm a herper, and I like it. My name is Ty Park. Uh, welcome to my farm. I started this a little more than eight years ago. I wanted to pursue my passion, which is keeping reptiles, and mainly lizards and tortoises. And uh, in 2007, I was able to acquire the 12 acres uh, in uh, Southwest Florida. Basically, I really don't want this company, although it's set up as a company, and the name of the company is Ty's Lizards. Uh, the reason why it's Ty's Lizards is very simple. I want it to be and like a fun, not too serious. Uh, that's why my logo is a cartoon character. Um, uh, it's just, you know, I don't want this to be a business. I, it's more like I want to show my passion, uh, my love, uh, you know, the animals that I work with. And um, I really didn't plan to be this big. When I bought this farm, I thought it was just gonna be very comfortable, one or two people working for me. You know, maybe a few hundred animals at the most. Now it's kind of blown up. Maybe up to a couple of thousand animals that I have. We're breeding and some of the babies I'm raising up. So it's gotten to be pretty big. Uh, it probably is now the largest sakura and spiny tail farm in the world. And of course, probably largest table farm as well. Basically, the uh, species that I work with is uh, spiny tail iguanas, uh, tenosaurus, the uh, dichlorus. Uh, I have uh, four species that I work with because mainly they are very endangered and all cities and they are very difficult to get obviously and then the uh, tegus I probably have uh, maybe 140 adult breeders when it comes to spine teguanas I would say 600 plus this is a typical cage for a uh, spiny teguana uh, there are four animals in here one male banana morph actinata and the other one that you see is a very rare iguana it is a um, i think only three in existence it's a albino pectinata mexican spiny toy iguana uh, basically this cage is five foot by five foot and six and a half high and this is the hide box and this is heated when the temperature goes below 55. basically i'm just using a uh, inexpensive garbage can because since we're in Florida, we really don't need insulation. Uh, matter of fact, I, I don't want it to get too hot in there. I, I think that in the winter, at night, if they get down to 50s and 60s, that's really good for them. Uh, they don't need to be hot all the time, especially with the heat during the day. Most of the uh, cages, I like to have some plant in them. And the bottom is screened so that they can't um, dig anywhere but that lay area. And that basically constitutes a uh, ideal spiny toy iguana habitat. This is a male, Tinosaurus bakeri from Utila Island off Honduras. This animal I raised up as baby. He's uh, about four years old now. Uh, one of the prettiest and probably the most endangered species of spiny tail in the world. They only occur in, I'd say, less than four square miles in the whole world. You can see the male have real high spikes over here and they're truly magnificent animals and actually this is one of my favorite uh, spiny tail because they're also very plastic. This one is Tinosaura macrolofa. This one is from Mexico. This is a female that I raised up. Uh, she's three years old. These guys uh, typically get um, about 18 inches. This one is Tinosaura melanosterna. Common name is black chested spiny tail iguana. They come from Honduras and they get up to three feet some books would tell you that they'll get longer but i have rarely seen one any over 30 inches so this is a male they do make excellent pets and i love, especially like this species because they remind me of smaller cycloras this is tinosaurus concacarinata typically called club tail iguana from nicaragua this is a full-grown adult this one came in at the rescue. This is a Tinosaurus similis. 
It's probably the most widespread species of spiny toe in the world. They are commonly called black spiny toe iguana. This one is a male. Actually, this was a rescue for me. Somebody trapped them. They are invasive now in Florida and they wanted to shoot him. But at the last minute, they called me and I drove about 50 minutes to uh, bring them back. I, I really don't know what I want to do with them, but it's obviously it's a very beautiful uh, animal. I just, uh, yeah, a rescue. I just want to give them a good home. This spiny toe iguana is Tinosaura palearis. They're from Guatemala. This one is a female. This is typical adult size. Uh, you can see some of the pie pattern here. That's very typical of this species. You know, very pretty part of this uh, spiny toe iguana, I think. You're looking at a uh, Tinosaura odenhaina from Honduras. They are typically very dark black with this pie pattern here. This pie pattern will grow larger as the animal mature. This is a male, about four years old. I raised them as a baby. Uh, actually, I bought four of them um, as babies and they all turned out to be male. So, but recently I got a uh, female uh, on loan. So hopefully I produce these guys uh, in 2016. This is the only other species in the ge genus Iguana. This is Iguana delicatissima, very endangered species. As an adult, they become uh, very grayish and with massive head. This one is a female. We have eight of them at the farm. This was hatched in 2013. They are smaller than regular green iguana. They're from Lesser Antillian Island. Uh, they typically get to be about four feet, maybe five. What you're seeing is a uh, juvenile, or actually a baby, less than a year old, blue green iguana. Some people call them aizanthic. And a fully grown female blue green iguana. A lot of people think that uh, these guys don't grow up to be this blue, but they do. Uh, you can see the belly here. This is a four-year-old female with six-month-old baby. Excellent. What you're seeing in this cage is a um, trio, a male red iguana, a uh, female normal green, and a very unique um, T plus albino green iguana. I believe I have two here and it might be the only ones in the world, I do not know, but there are two at this farm. I don't see this as a business. Every day I'm here because I'm passionate about the animals, uh, passionate about, you know, it's just fun. So day to day, it just is not a business. Obviously I have the business, all the business licenses and you know, tax ID numbers and all the things the government requires. But you know, I don't like that part. So I have a manager who does all that, uh, uh, the paperwork, I have an accountant, a uh, bookkeeper. And so basically I'm here um, kind of like supervising, making plans and that my staff could carry out. Really, this is my passion and my love and not a business per se. So one of the things that we do uh, here, uh, because there's so many animals we have, uh, we don't force ourselves on them. Um, if they do not want to be touched, and we don't touch them. Unless, of course, uh, for medical reasons and, uh, you know, if we need to move them or something like that. But I would say, of, the, of all the cyclists that we have, um, I'd say maybe at least 10% would approach you, and some of them become really tame just by nature. We're looking at a um, typical cyclora cage. Uh, this one happened to be 15 by 20. Uh, you can see the uh, hide box here where it's heated in the winter. Typical log that they could climb on. A couple of uh, plants and a uh, lay area in the back. The bottom is always screened. This is Cooper. He's a uh, high quality low side hybrid. And I had him for about three years now. I would say he's about 18 years old. One of my pets here at the farm. Uh, he produced uh, for a couple years, but this year in 2015, he did not produce. The female that I have uh, paired him with was not productive. So, one of the most gorgeous animal I have at the farm. I'm kind of partial to him. This is Rocky, one of my pet rhino. He's not cooperating right now. But uh, he's typically very, obviously very mellow. I had him for about seven years now. Matter of fact, he was the first cyclora I have at the farm and fell in love with him and decided to uh, expand. And 
Now, of course, obviously, I have more than 100 uh, cyclorus here. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. This is Rosie, Rocky's mate. She has beautiful red belly. She came in very wild when I got her at three-year-old about uh, six years ago. She's really a sweetheart. That's a good girl. I have a uh, pair of Cyclora nubula caymanensis. Their common name is Sister Island Rock Iguana. They come from, these actually come from Cayman Brack. And uh, there's another population in uh, Little Cayman. So how do we water so many animals at the farm? Basically, uh, we use sprinkle system and drip system. So all the large pans had either drip system or sprinkle system. Some of the uh, animals that like get really wet, they I use sprinklers. And the ones that like it dry, we we'll use drip system. I have uh, 1.2 Cuban iguanas in here. Cyclora nubula nubula. And these animals came from Puerto Rico. I got them here about four years ago. So um, they were wild four years ago. Uh, these were introduced accidentally in, in a small island off of Puerto Rico. And they're basically invasive there. So we were able to get paperwork and get them to the farm uh, four years ago. This is three different species of Cyclora that I have at the farm. Uh, obviously they're uh, hatchlings, uh, less than two months old. One on your right is a rhino. One in the middle is a Cuban iguana. And one on your left is the uh, Lewisai, a very high quality hybrid. This is Miles. I believe this is the only morph cyclora in the world. He hatched out at this farm almost two months ago, not quite two months yet. Uh, he hatched out as a leather back, very smooth back here. And his parents were both Lewisai hybrid. He's really special animal and he's shedding right now. Believe it or not, they I haven't had any shedding problem with them yet. But it's very young still, so well, no problem yet. Currently, I have 10 employees that include myself. A veterinarian, I have, I would say, it's about half a time. But like I said again, I want to keep it as a hobby. Uh, I see it as a hobby. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't even have a website. Because I felt that having a website make it more like business and I have to actually work. This is a uh, typical pen for uh, our tegus. Uh, it's 10 feet long and three and a half feet wide. And as you can see, we have a couple of albino blue tegus. This is a male. These two happen to be T plus albinos, so they're darker. But you can see clearly that they have red eyes and lots of lavender. This is a year old, Teliqua Intermedia, Northern Blue Tongue Skink. She was born here about a year ago, about a year and uh, three months, I believe. And she's one of our future breeders. Uh, we have probably about uh, 70 Blue Tongue Skink here at the facility. And this is one genus that I want to expand. I would like to get all the species of the uh, Blue Tongue Skink here eventually. These are Shingleback Skinks, Tiliqua rugosa rugosa. And of course they're from Australia. I have 1.2 here, one male and two females. Just an incredibly magnificent animal. A lot of people think that they're pair bond. It might be true in the wild, but in captivity, uh, they really not, tend not to. Uh, you could pair them up or you could change uh, mates. Uh, right now, I keep 1.2. One of the things that I do want people to know is that uh, I'm really not doing this for the money. And really, if you start counting money, um, you know, your passion disappears. So really, every species here are here because I, I love them. And, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, what's your favorite, you know, species? I don't have any. I, every species that I keep here is because I want them here because I love, I love them, so. What's your opinion? Do you think the blue tongue skink will explode in popularity in the next couple of years? Comment below and share your opinion. You know, Ty has built a reputation around being an incredible reptile breeder, especially with his lizards. But as you just saw, there is so much more to his collection. That was an incredible visit. So we'll see you next time as we visit even more incredible facilities all over the world here on Zilla Presents Herpers TV.